Hello, it's Sis Volk. Time to enjoy card making with me. This video is one to save, along with the next video to come about making guild cards. Save it as a referral in your list to go to later when you are working with shape dies and need inspiration or tips. Some time ago I asked Alina to design dies that you can use to make guild cards. And she did. I am very happy with that. It took me a while to make a video for it. Every time I work with these dies I get overwhelmed, because the thing is, you really have infinite possibilities for using them. I have lots of tips to share with you on how best to work with these dies. Because even though it's pretty easy, you still run into a few things when making a guild card. This video will be about all the tips and tricks I want to share with you that will be helpful when working with these guild dies. In the next video I will give you loads of examples for working with the guild die shapes. I had too much footage to put it all in one video. Don't forget to subscribe to Alina Crafts channel and my channel Sisfolk as well and hit the bell notification button. I really hope to get more viewers. I need a thousand subscribers to get paid by YouTube, so that would be awesome. Also thank you for using my affiliate links. They cost you nothing and help you find the products easier. For me making a video is a lot of work, so I hope you appreciate what I do and support me by using the links when shopping on AliExpress. Here's the first tip I have for you. Many of these die cuts come double in the package. You can cut these loose with a pair of metal pliers. They are sold in hardware stores and also online on AliExpress. And they are very cheap, so get one if you don't have one yet. For a very long time I only used my fingers to detach die cuts. Or I used a pair of pliers that were way too big and not suited for the job. I have often been frustrated unnecessarily. I recommend that you don't cut everything loose. Cut one shape loose and leave the other shape assembled. It will increase your capabilities and reduce your frustrations. Tip 2. Make a list for yourself of how many dies there are. I drew the shapes on the package and wrote on the back of the cardboard that there are 34 dies in total. That's a lot of shapes for very little money I think, on a very small sheet of cardstock. If you do not cut the double dies loose, as I recommend, then you end up with a total of 27 dies. This way you can cut each shape in a large format, a small format and in a combined format. That in turn makes 30 different die cut shapes. Are you still following me? Sometimes it's like math, but that's why I figured it out for you. So you can just be happy with the fun part and that's puzzling with the shapes. Tip 3. These narrow dies are ideal for use as banner strips. Stamp a text sentiment and then die cut the text with this die. I've made some examples here. All texts are from Alina Croft stamp sets. I will try to find links for them and put them in the description. Many of these stamps already have matching die sets with banner strips. But if you are making a guild card, I do think it's best if the banner matches the rest of the card. Of course you can also stamp on the shapes themselves, or stick a banner strip in or on top of a shape. Plenty possibilities. Tip number 4. I've die cut all the shapes in different colors to use for puzzling and coming up with different patterns. This might be helpful for you to do as well. It makes it easier to see and figure out how many shapes you need to cut out to get a certain pattern. In my next video I will use these color die cuts to show you my examples. My fifth tip is to use a magnetic tray. With so many dies, you can easily lose the dies and you can also quickly lose the overview. So you can easily keep them together. You sometimes see them in rectangular trays. They are normally used for nails and screws. Sometimes it can also be useful to use a magnetic sheet. 
you can easily lay the shapes flat next to each other to keep the overview. I already recommended that of the shapes that are double in this set, you only cut out the double parts loose, as you see here with the diamond shapes. This way you can cut a large diamond and a frame with a small diamond in it. But if you have already separated the dies, as I did with the squares, then there's an easy way to assemble the dies. And that's my sixth tip. To do this, take a piece of masking tape, washi tape or painter's tape. Lay this down flat and place the dies on it. Make sure the cut is on the same side as it was originally and that the distance is parallel on all sides. The only disadvantage of using these tapes is that it's quite sticky and can leave glue residue on the paper or even tear your paper. To avoid this, I recommend powdering a small amount of talcum powder or powder from an embossing body on the part of washi tape that sticks out. It will stick just a little less strong, but good enough not to damage your paper. Another option instead of using tape is press and seal. Great stuff when you want to cut a lot of dies at once. This cling film looks like regular cling film, but is sticky by itself. Unfortunately it's not available in all countries, or in some countries only in stores where special products are sold from the USA. I cut small pieces that I use regularly when die cutting some pattern paper. This pattern paper is matte and you won't easily see any glue residue on it. You can also use talcum powder with this press and seal, only it will lose the stickiness quicker than tape. I showed you earlier that I stamped text strips and cut them out with the rectangular narrow die from the gilt dies. So I first stamped and then I die cut it. Tip 7. Glue. I am always looking for a good glue that dries well but still allows a little time for the image to move and otherwise doesn't leave stains or bumps. And also this glue needs to still be holding after a year. I have found that a multi-coat glue or medium matte glue works very well. The glue in the jar from Craft Emotions is practically the same as the one from Ranger, only the smell differs in my opinion. I put the glue in a glue syringe, which works fine for me. Applying the glue with a brush is also possible. You have to work fast and make sure you don't use too much glue. For working with the kill dies, it is a fine glue. Tip number 8. To be able to glue these shapes on, a fine pair of tweezers is ideal, especially a pair of tweezers with a bent tip is handy. Then you don't have to twist your wrist and you can better see what you are doing. Tip number 9. To be able to glue these dies straight, I use a T-ruler. I use this to draw guidelines with a Tombow propelling pencil with a pin tip. I also use the T-ruler to align the die cut shapes. For gluing the shapes, I recommend to always take a larger piece of paper than you expect to need. If you glue it crooked, or if the glue makes the paper wet, the pattern may be a few millimeters larger than expected. You can first glue the shapes onto a thin card panel that you will later cut to size to stick onto your final card. Or if you want to keep the card as thin as possible, glue them to a larger piece of cardstock that you trim later. Otherwise you will find that the shapes barely fit on your paper when gluing them to a card that has been cut to size too small, and that's a shame. Start in the corner of the paper and work your way down, so that when you are finished you can cut the card to size. Tip 10. It's handy to use a straight clear block to align the paper against. You see, this way you stick completely straight. But you can also use your stamping tool or your carving platform for this. Because of the raised edge, you will stick exactly straight. Make sure your paper doesn't get too wet from the glue, because then it will stretch a bit and the result may be disappointing. During the drying of the glue, I also use my clear block 
and put something heavy on it, so the glue will take hold and dry flat. It may also be helpful to stick the shapes to double sided adhesive, and that will be tip 11. You'll have to be very careful not to tear off too much backing at once, but it is possible and fun to do. You can be sure your card won't bulge. You can stick the adhesive on your panel, but also on the paper you are die cutting. I previously made a video with banner strips where I used this technique. Click on the top right corner or look in the description to view that one. Tip 12. Then it's also important to keep your die cutting plates clean. I know my plates look terrible. Because of the many die cutting with tape and different colors of paper, the plates get dirty and this dirt will stick to your die cut out shapes with an ugly effect as a result. Just clean them under the tap with hot water and a hard brush is good enough. Tip 13. The last tip in a row for now. I always save little scraps of paper. To make examples, I have die cut a lot of shapes in one color. I now use these to measure if I have enough paper to make the card I intend to make. I also use these colored shapes in my next video to show a lot of different guild patterns. You could call them sketches. But now I will be making a card where I will show you how I glue the shapes on using the techniques and tips I just showed you. For the card size I want to make an A6 card. But to be sure that I won't end up a few millimeters over the edge when gluing, I cut my paper a half centimeter wider. I know that the exact size you need is 15 by 10.5 centimeters for this design. I do fold it in half already, because I trust that the width will fit exactly. For the creasing of the card I use a stylus tool. You crease the card on the outside of the card. And for bending it flat, I use a bone folder. For this card I chose a water-based ink that matched the metal textures pattern paper to give the card a bit more contrast. It can sometimes be tricky to pick two matching sheets. They are all beautiful. I use the color Teal Zeal from Memento Ink to blend my panel. I first smear ink on a makeup brush. Then I wipe the excess ink on my glass mat. You can also take a piece of plastic, or a plate or a silicone mat, if you don't have this, even a scrap of paper. And then in circular motions I wipe the ink on the card. And now suddenly I remember a tip Jennifer McGuire shared the other day that I had almost forgotten myself. Mask the back of your card when you ink blend. This prevents smudges of ink from getting onto the back of your card. You can of course use original masking tape for this, but a few post-it notes works just as well. It's okay if the ink is not perfectly blended everywhere. There will be shapes on top later on. The best effect though is when the ink is darker at the edges than in the middle. The post-it notes I can use again later. In retrospect, I could have made the ink a bit thicker at the edges. Ink blending with other inks, such as oxide ink, is also possible. But then you have to be careful to let the ink dry properly. Archival ink is perhaps best, because it does not stain so easily when gluing later. I put my card in my stamping platform. The raised edge helps me align the shapes along the edge. Inside my glue container is multimedia mat from Craft Emotions. I use my tweezers and glue the shape right into the corner. To adhere the shape, I place an acrylic block on top of this. When I stick the second shape on, I see that they do not exactly fit next to each other. Fortunately, I can still lift the first shape and place it next to the other one. Because the dye is wet from the glue, it sometimes gives way. Next to my stamping tool, 
I also have the extra silicone mat that came with my glass mat. I find this mat very useful to wipe off excess glue or to absorb it. The mat is very easy to clean. That's number 14. <laughs> this quilt pattern has been my favorite so far. I like the fact that you can use the die cut shapes as well as the solid shapes or on top of that the smaller shapes. If necessary with 3D foam raised. You see I rotate the card to be able to glue right along the edge again. The last two parts fit perfectly in. The small edge I have left I now cut off. You see it's exactly 15 cm high. I kept the inner shapes. These I will now glue back with 3D foam. Keep your dies and die cuts together in order after die cutting, so that the inner die cut that came out of the bigger shape can be glued back in exactly the same place. Putting the whole thing in a pile in a container seems easier and faster, but it is not. It's neater if you keep the figures together, so that the colors run over nicely. Finding the right color in the right shape takes much more time. I also glue the text strip with 3D foam. The text I have die cutted with a long kilt die. The T ruler helps me to glue the text straight. Then I glue two squares in the middle. And even though you can glue something so straight, it can still go wrong sometimes. The text strip should be a little lower. Fortunately I can repair this and glue it on. So if you want to copy this card, do the squares first and then the text. I wanted to keep this card simple on purpose. But if you want, you can of course embellish it with glitter, with gems, with glossy accents a stamped image or other nice picture, dew drops, glitter glue, etc. Possibilities are endless. Then I will now apply some scraps to my envelope. The post-it tape comes in handy now to mask a part of the envelope. I use the squares on my work mat to align the post-it. I use a small shape to see how wide the part to be masked should be. Now I know where to stick the other post-it note. And again I look at the stripes on my work mat to see whether I am going straight. And now I ink blend the strip onto the envelope, the same way I blended the card. Pulling away a mask is always such a magical part. After I clean the plate, I start looking for the center of the envelope. You can easily find the center of the paper by looking at the work mat. And if you don't have such a checkered work surface, you can of course do it using checkered paper. But also with a ruler you can easily find the center, although you need to start calculating. The first shape I stick in the middle and the rest comes parallel to it. Also here I use my clear block to make it nice and straight. If you do not have such a clear block, you can also just put a small pencil line and erase it after gluing. I do the same thing for the other side. I move my clear block to the other side to glue my triangle straight. The overhanging part I cut off. Here you see the same kind of card I made where I used the kisses paper. That looks very different again. This one I did without ink blending. On this card with lips I did not glue the shapes raised, but I just filled other shapes with parts that I left blank on the other card. I accentuated the lips with glossy accents. Again I used leftover pieces to decorate my envelopes. 
I hope my tips for making kilt cards will be helpful. Look out for my next video. I will do my best to upload it next week. In it, I will give lots of inspiration for making different cards using these kilt dies. So subscribe to my channel Sis Folk and click on the bell button so you won't miss anything. Enjoy card making and I will see you next time. Bye bye!